Hello everyone. Again, good afternoon, magandang hapon, uh, maayong adlaw, and welcome to today's session to delve on the very important topic on the role of cement and aggregates in concrete durability. I am JL Padero, I'm here, and I'll be your host for this afternoon. We will be having two experts in the field of cement, and aggregates to give us further knowledge and insight on the role of these two very important components in concrete durability. All right, before we begin, let me just go through our webinar house rules. Your active participation is important throughout the session. So everyone is placed on mute to avoid background noises that may distract you from listening to the webinar. Please use the Q&A box located at the dashboard to ask question. Again, please use the Q&A box that's located on the lower right portion of your software application for any questions. The moderator will screen, select, and answer your questions at the end of the presentation. The poll activity will be launched after the Q&A session. Winners from the poll activities will be announced in Pinoy Builders' Facebook page and will be sent also via email. And post-evaluation will be shared later. We will also be recording this webinar for documentation purposes. All right, now let me introduce our first speaker for this afternoon. Are we all good with that? A certified cement expert, the current head of technical services and concrete solutions of Hosing Philippines. He has been with Hosing for more than 23 years as the former quality assurance manager of both Hosing Bulacan and Davao plants. With extensive experience in technical project delivery related to product and market feasibility, he significantly contributed to the development of Holosim core product and solutions such as Holosim Excel, Holosim 4X, Wallright, Solido, and Holosim Mobile Laboratory. He is a licensed chemical engineer also. Without further ado, let's hear from engineer Irwin Mendoza from Holosim Philippines to talk about the role of cement in concrete durability. Take it away, sir, Erin. Thank you, JL. Uh, I hope you can hear me. I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, let me present my presentation, JL. And good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining this uh, webinar. Thanks, JL. Right. So. That shows your interest in building better structures that will last according to their expected life, no? Uh, if not, probably even more. So thank you also to Pinoy Builders for inviting us here and giving us this opportunity to share and reconnect again with our end users and help in their pursuit for better concrete performance. So let us begin. And if you have attended my previous webinars, uh, that was webinar lang pala last week on blended cements, then probably you will see some familiar slides uh, today. That's because understanding the composition of cement will help me better explain its ro role in, uh, in dura durability of concrete. No? Uh, I have to include those topics para mas madali ko siyang ma-explain. But I promise though that I put a lot of effort in making this part of the lecture easy for you to understand kahit na hindi yung mga chem chemist or chemical engineers or uh, kabisado yung cemento. I hope you will understand it better with the way I'm approaching the presentation and I hope I'm, I, I will do it well. Warning though that kung meron tayong mga participants dito that are chemist, chemical engineers, then you will see some different uh, symbols on chemicals probably and you because uh, cement engineers is uh, tawag namin sa kanila they're not all chemical and chemists uh, chemical engineers and chemists naman so they develop their own way of naming compounds na mas madali nilang maintindihan no? so it's different from what we learn in school so wag niyo ko ibasa eh 
So let's start with the simplified illustration of making cement muna. Again, we have to do this. Kung nakita nyo na to, then it's going to be a sort of a review for all of you. Right, so first step is we produce a material called clinker. Now, dito sa clinker, nag, nagagaling yung mga cement properties na makikita natin. No? Strength, setting time, heat of hydration, and even durability, and many more. Now, from that cement, uh, from that clinker, sorry, we produce cement. So, dun lang, one and second step lang, and then you have your cement. Now, it looks simple here, but uh, believe me, it's really complicated pagdating sa field. Now, step one, when we produce clinker, nilalagay natin yung limestone, silica, and other raw materials uh, sa loob ng kiln, uh, operating at 1,400 degrees Celsius. So, we operate at a very high temperature. And because limestone is the dominant raw material, take note that when we hit limestone, that's calcium carbonate, it breaks down into two products, no? lime, which is very important for clinker to give those properties ng cement that we know, and carbon dioxide gas. Uh, we know the effect of carbon dioxide in terms of climate change and global warming and all those things. No? And aside from that, breaking of limestone, we also use coal to fuel and to produce this amount of temperature, which is again, uh, coal is carbon, so C plus oxygen, that's CO2 gas. So two ways that we produce carbon dioxide gas into the atmosphere. So it's very timely also that we discuss, very re relevant to our discussion today on durability because that means we have to use wisely the cement that we use in construction. Kasi kung hindi, then if, not, if the structure is not durable enough, then we have to do repairs no? earlier than expected or more repairs, more rebuilding kasi nasira na, nag-deteriorate na. Then that means more concrete needed or more cement needed and more carbon dioxide needed uh, will be produced, sorry. But it's good to know at this point, I would just like to emphasize that our company Lafarge Holcim has already started many years ago in uh, addressing the uh, CO2 emissions. And just this year, we committed to a net zero pledge. And if you want to hear more about that, what holds Lafarge Hosim is doing globally to address carbon dioxide emissions, then I ask you to please visit www.lafargehosim.com and click on the net zero pledge there. Right, so what is in clinker, ba? Right, so from raw materials, we said we use limestone, silica, alumina, iron, and we need these components, no? CAO is IO2 alumina iron. We reacted this together sila pinaghalo natin para mag-react sila in, at a very high temperature to produce clinker. So ano bang nasa loob ng clinker out of the combination of these raw material compounds? So they, we produce a compound that influences the properties of cement like C3S, C2S, C3A, C4AF. So not necessarily for you to remember but para mas madali siyang ma Ma no? So C3S is for early strength, uh, heat, and heat of vibration, you know, the heat produced when cement comes in contact with water. C2S also for strength, but most of the strength comes from C3S. No? C3A, the setting time, and also produces a significant amount of heat during hydration or contact with water. And C4AF has nothing to do with strength or setting time, but just affects the color of cement. So because one cement is gray, one cement is dark gray, doesn't mean na mas malakas yung isa kasi isa. It's just the C4AF concentration of one may be higher than the other. So, but it tells you that the cement might be coming from different source. No? So that's all there is. So C3S, C2S, C3A, these are the compounds that are important to us with regards to properties of cement. When we use them in uh, concrete. So tapos na tayong gumawa ng cement, we're now ready for step two, which is to produce our clinker. So to produce the clinker, we either we have two options. We use we produce Portland cement, or we can produce blended cement. To produce Portland cement, so your clinker plus gypsum, you grind them together, and then you'll have your Portland cement. As simple as that. And purpose of gypsum is to regulate the setting time because without gypsum, clinker plus water will set immediately. Very fast setting. Wala ka ng time to transport to mix or ibuhos yung cement mo, or yung concrete mo. No? Or you can also produce blended cement out of the same clinker. So gypsum again, but 
this time we add mineral component or blend material, we grind them all, then we have blended cement. So the mineral component or the blend material actually replaces a certain amount of clinker. That means for one bag of blended cement, you have lower carbon dioxide emission because you use less clinker, which is uh, the main producer of carbon dioxide emission. So that's one advantage of blended cements. So just to review again, classification of cements in the Philippine National Standards, we have Portland cement and blended cement. And under Portland cement, we have type one, two, three, up to type five. Blended cement, we have type 1P, type P, 1T, and 1L. But these, some of these here are not yet available because the PNS is currently undergoing review, the national standard. Uh, so probably it will be released next year. No? So, but we're anticipating that there will be more blended cements coming because of this uh, revision in the standard. So types of Portland cement, again, if you make Portland cement, no? type one up to type five, the specs that you are going to change will be the specs of your clinker, okay? So if you want to produce type one cement, you produce type one clinker. If you want to produce type two cement, you produce type two clinker. And you will see that later on in these descriptions. So these are the types of Portland cement, type one and type two muna. And you see that type two for type one is a, the common OPC that we would know that we know in the market used for general construction, bridge, roads, buildings, etc. Type two is kind of a special Portland cement because a special feature niya is moderate sulfate resistance. So at this point, this is already a, a bit, uh, durability feature, no? uh, resisting sulfate uh, ions. And you can see here that in order to do that, you have to design your type two to be lower in C3A compared to type one. So alala natin, no? C3A kanina, heat setting time must be less than 8%. So this is from clinker. So yun sinasabi ko, that's what I said, that if you want to produce different types of Portland cement, ang specs na babaguhin mo is yung specs ng clinker. So type two is structures exposed to soil or water containing sulfate ions. Type three is high early strength cement. Uh, so more C3S because C3S is the source of strength ng cemento. But it's not really uh, ginagamit sa atin dito madalas sa Pilipinas because more applicable siya sa cold weather concreting no, sa ibang bansa. Type 4 is low heat of hydration. Yung, so low C3S content because C3S is the source of heat. Less than 50% yung sabi niya. And C3A is also lower. No? Uh, Heat of hydration, but because both of these C3s and C3A are sources of heat of hydration. So applicable siya for massive structures. Kung nag-iingat ka kasi sobrang uh, mass, massive yung structure na gagawin mo, like dams. No? Type 5 is parang type 2, but higher sulfate resistance. So very low C3A content, less than 5. Ang type 2 kanina is less than 8. So mas mababa siya kasi mas matapang na yung sulfate that the cement is has to deal with. So those are the types of Portland cement. And at this point, you will already see na ano yung mga cement na gagamitin ko in terms of durability when you are foreseeing sulfate attack because of the situation of the soil kung saan may tatayo yung, yung structure. Now, blended cements naman, if, type, if for Portland cement, you're going to change the specs of your clinker para magkaroon ka ng iba-ibang types, type 1 to type 5. In the case of blended cement, it depends on the blend material that you use. right? So ano ba yung mga blend materials na sample na ginagamit dito? If it could be fly ash, which is a byproduct of burning coal, natural pozzolan, slag, and limestone. So these are the, but mostly ginagamit fly ash, natural pozzolans. No? So again, as I've said, did it define siya based on the material na inad sa kanya or blend material? So type 1P, for example, the most common in 40 kilogram bag na nasa market ngayon is type 1P. That's Portland Pozzolan Cement. It's the most common available in the market. No? Uh, type 1S is Portland Slug Cement. Type P is Pozzolan Cement. Now the two here are the new ones that will be introduced when the new Philippine National Standard will, will be released probably next year. Right. So 
what happens when cement reacts with water or what we call hydration? Importante ding malaman to because may participation siya sa durability role ng cement. Uh, for example, yeah, for example, for durability, no? Uh, if this is our cement particle, let us first examine uh, the reaction of Portland cement with water. So if this is your cement particle, nandiyon yung C3S, yung C2S, then you add amount of water para dun sa pag makagawa ka ng konkreto. Then that will produce two products. CSH, which gives the strength. Calcium silicate hydrate, no? Shortcut is CSH. Siya no bibigay ng strength. And calcium hydroxide. It does nothing much on strength. Wala siya masyadong purpose. Nandyan lang siya as a byproduct. Hindi siya maiwasan because of the raw materials, no? So palaging nandyan yan. Although wala naman siya masyadong gamit. No? So that's C3S and C2S. Ang C3A naman, so remember, may apat, C2S, C3S, C3A. So ang C3A naman, if it reacts with water, diretso yan, magsiset. Mag-harden ka agad yung hydration product niya. But we use gypsum. So ang, work, ang trabaho ng gypsum is to delay the setting or to regulate the setting of our cement no, when it comes in contact with water. So when they do this reaction, ang mangyayari muna is they'll form a product called itringite or itringite, however you want to pronounce it. And then this product will react with the remaining C3A. Tapos, finally, monosulfate. No? So this, no need to, to focus much, but sinasabi lang dito is that this reaction regulates the setting of cement. Parang hindi siya masyadong mag-set kaagad. But you will see later on sa durability aspect na yung mga etringite na to, etringite, will have also effect on durability. That's why I'm, I'm showing you this. So that's Portland cement. How about blended cement? So basically the same. C3S, C2S, uh, mixed with water, produce two products, CSH, and then yung isang calcium hydroxide na walang masyadong trabaho. But then, this particular byproduct will now react with the blend material, like for example, pozzolan blend material, slag or fly ash. And then, they will form more calcium silicate hydrate product. So more strength. So yung walang masyadong trabaho sana na byproduct, napakinabangan pa siya to give more strength to your cement no, when it hardens. C3A follows more or less the same as Portland. So hindi ko na ilalagay dito. Importante lang that CH, a byproduct na walang masyadong purpose, is na consume siya at napakinabangan siya by adding the blend material. So the blend material is not just for extender. It has a purpose in terms of hydration. No? Kaya sinasabi nila, yung pozzolan cement namin dati mas tumatagal, it gains strength long term compared to OPC. And that's true because of that reaction. So one more thing before we proceed with concrete durability and the role of cement, let us first clearly define cement and concrete. To produce your concrete, you must have this, cement, aggregates, fine and coarse, and water. Then you'll have your concrete. And may also contain admixtures and some fibers. So is cement concrete? No, no. Alam natin ngayon na hindi. Kasama lang siya sa ingredients sa paggawa ng konkreto. But, in-emphasize ko to because although alam natin na cement is not concrete, pero ang tawag natin sa kalsada is cementadong kalsada, not konkretong kalsada. Or yung umiikot na mixer trucks is cement mixer, hindi concrete mixer. So para lang mahiwalay natin yung dalawang terminologies. No? That's because also, if you look at the properties of concrete, isa lang dun yung cement that gives factor to the prop properties of concrete. No? So marami. Titignan mo lahat yan. That will all play a significant role in the quality of concrete. Same with durability. It's, cement is just one component. All the others, including mixed design, application and curing, structural design and specs, will all play a significant role in concrete durability. So for my role uh, this afternoon is I'll just talk about the cement-specific role on mitigating uh, durability issues, right? Because there are other concrete properties and designs that can address those issues as well, right? Uh, concrete practices, etc. But we will touch a bit on that as well. All right. So what is concrete durability? It is the capability of concrete to resist weathering, chemical attacks, abrasion, or other deterioration process. But as far as the role of cement is more on the chemical attacks. No? So what are these common chemical attacks? It's sulfate, carbonation, and chloride attack. 
And you will notice that in the diagram here, in the visual here is that it all needs to penetrate the concrete surface. Yep, they, they, they can impact the concrete surface, but mas malaki yung impact niya, damage na magagawa if nag-penetrate sila dun sa concrete natin. No? Sulfates, carbon dioxide, chlorine. Across all, we can consider concrete permeability a significant property of concrete to improve durability. Right? So let's talk about concrete permeability muna. Porosity and permeability of concrete. Are they the same? We interchange them some, from time to time, no? Porous, permeable. But you say that Portland cement, they all form pores when the cement starts to hydrate. Hindi naman yan cracks. There are just capillary pores, tawag natin. But for blended cement, they form the same pores. But over time, because of the additional reaction, more hydration products are formed. They fill up the pores. And you will see that magkakaroon na tuloy siya ng discontinuous na pores. No? Hindi siya tuloy-tuloy. Making this concrete less permeable. Yes, they are both porous, but one is more permeable. Yeah? That's because of the additional hydration products that happens when you use blended cement. Of course, you can also, over time, this will also be discontinuous, but mas marami discontinuous uh, pores when you use blended cement because of the additional hydration products. It is also affected by the water cement ratio. Yung dami ng tubig na ginagamit natin sa ating mixture. And you can see here, no? 0.5 water cement ratio versus 0.3 water cement ratio. These are pores. These are pores. Yung mga in-between layers ng uh, paste and aggregates and the other cement paste na nag-hydrate. This is under scanning electron microscope. No? This is how it looks like sa mundo ng cement and concrete. Ah, ng aggregate, sorry. This is your aggregates. Ito yung cement paste na kumakapit sa kanya. Whereas kapag mababa yung water cement ratio, it's very solid. You, wala ka masyado makitang voids or pores. No, it's very strong concrete. So this is the relationship. As you increase your water cement ratio, your coefficient of permeability also increases. No, sinasabi, uh, kapag 0.4 yung water cement ratio mo, divide mo lang yung water sa cement mo. No? That's 0.4 then your capillary pores start to be connected. Magkakadugtong-dugtong na siya. So it's better to keep it below 0.4 to make sure na permeable or less per permeable yung concrete mo. And at 0.7, that's 100% capillary pores are connected. So actually, makikita din natin sa ACI 318 yung guide natin that they focus on water cement ratio. In the design of concrete to address uh, sulfate resistance, permeability, and corrosion, which are issues of durability. Right? So magita natin na focus siya sa water cement ratio. That means significant talaga siya. They, they understand it and they consider it. So we can test permeability using rapid chloride penetration test. And blended cement like Solido that we have when compared to OPC shows very low penetration compared to OPC. So that's one proof that blended cement really is uh, less perme uh, helps to produce permeable concrete. All right, so one form of deterioration is caused by sulfate attack. It occurs when your structure is built close to or on the soil with high amount of sulfate ions. So ito yung mga ranges ng uh, sulfate para makonsider natin na moderate, severe, or very severe yung condition ng lupa na pagtatayuan. So chemical soil chemical analysis can give you this. Um, values. And this is the itsura nung under sulfate attack na concrete. So what happens? Again, so I'm bringing this up para makita nyo ang connection niya. No? Okay, so if this is your concrete, sulfate ions will penetrate your concrete kasi dun siya nakatayo. And these sulfate ions will look for the calcium hydroxide that does nothing much. And it will react, the sulfate will react with calcium hydroxide producing gypsum, which is, looks familiar with the gypsum that we use when we produce your cement, right? But this is what we call secondary gypsum. No? Doon na siya nagform sa loob ng concretum. And when this gypsum will react with mga natirang citrate na hindi naghydrate or other product ng citrate like monosulfate plus the water inside the capillary pores, no? capillary solution, magpo-produce ng itringgay, this one. 
And this is ring grade is expansive. Mas malaki yung volume niya kapag na form siya at nasa loob na siya ng concrete which already is hardened in hardened state. So it will push the concrete apart and it will cause cracks and damage in the future. All right? So Portland cements very clear. If you have moderate sulfate resistance need, you will use type 2 because of its low C3A. That's the reason why bakit low yung C3A no? para walang ma-react yung sulfate o yung secondary juice. And if very high sulfate resistant, type 5. What about blended cement? Of course, kung titinan mo yung standard ng blended cement, they can also be used as sulfate resistance. You have just to look for uh, MS, that means moderate sulfate. High, HS is high sulfate. The rest is uh, heat, moderate heat of hydration, low heat of hydration, but that's another topic. But for sulfate resistance, yes, your blended cement can act as a moderate sulfate resistance. That can, uh, pwede palitan yung type 2, substitute your type 2 your, or your type 5. So this is the test that we did uh, on our Solido cements, blended type 1P. And this is the limit of ASTM for sulfate resistance. And you can see that like type 2, and dito yung type 2, the green one, they're all below the required limit of length change, no? sulfate resistance. But, so again, how do we mitigate, so, mit, mitigate yung sulfate attack in concrete? So, depends on the sulfate exposure. You use type ng cement na kailangan natin, type 2 or type 5, depending on the severity. Or you can use blended cement, moderate sulfate, MS, or blended cement, HS. Important thing is, and the water cement ratio, of course, you have to do all these things in combination. Important thing is you have to discuss with your cement supplier if their blended cement has the durability properties, if they tested it for MS and HS, no? moderate sulfate and uh, high sulfate resistance, because probably, baka hindi siya na test, then we have to be sure na kaya niyang i-replace ang type 2. All right, carbonation. Carbonation, of course, is from carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. No? Um, it comes in contact with our concrete, and then at relative humidity of 40 to 90 percent, it reacts with it forms uh, uh, an acid. No, when it reacts with calcium hydroxide. So again, calcium, uh, carbon dioxide reacting with this. CH byproduct, uh, it forms an acid, and then it will lower the pH of your uh, concrete. Okay. And then if that low pH environment will reach your steel reinforcement, which have a passive layer, actually protected layer to it, medyo blue na to, light blue, because it's high in pH. So your steel reinforcement is protected. But when the low pH environment will reach that, it will break the passive layer or the protective layer and your steel reinforcement will now be subject to corrosion. No? So protective layer is gone and your it will rust and it will damage your concrete no? because rust is expansive also. So typical rate of carbonation, uh, depth of carbonation in number of years, no? depending on the strength of concrete, sinasabi, for for carbon dioxide to reach 5 mm depth, no? for a 20 MPa concrete, it will take half a year. But for 40 MPa concrete, it will take four years, and so on and so forth. So cover is vitally important when we talk of carbonation. Chloride attack, more or less the same. No? Uh, it attacks the reinforcement, not the cement or concrete. So. Kung sa ilalim ng dagat, kasi chloride yung nandun sa dagat, at wala ka namang reinforcement, shouldn't matter much. Unless, of course, kung may sulfate dun. No? So, because chloride attacks the steel reinforcement. So the same thing, may madadaanan siya, it will diffuse up to maabot niya yung steel reinforcement, ang nakakatakot sa chloride, kahit na may protective layer ka, high pH environment, wala siyang pakilam dun, it will eat up your steel reinforcement. And eventually, it will crack as well. So how do we mitigate these two? Protect your rebars, uh, meaning you reduce the permeability of concrete. Hindi dugtong-dugtong dapat yung capillary pores niya. 
that means you would, you should lower your water cement ratio less than 0.4 uh, consider sorry consider the use of blended cement due to its contribution to lower permeability of concrete and observe proper consolidation and curing and engineering wise proper cover design adequate cover or reinforcing bars example minimum of two inches so this is cover specification under ACI 318 I think yung mga structural engineers alam na alam nyo to mas kabisado nyo to kaysa sa akin no? but these are the specified cover in inches depending on the exposure ng yung uh, members so blended cements help reduce diffusion of chloride ions as well so if you can see sa study na ginawa ng whole seam uh, sa switzerland opc diffusivity is 44.7 but for blended with around 30 percent fly ash it reduced significantly to around 14.7 uh, diffusion coefficient. So diffusion of chloride ions at 25 degrees Celsius, ito yung conditions na ginawa yung experiment na to. Right, so it's about time already. In summary, cement is not concrete and types of cements are designed to address some durability issues like chemical attack. Blended cements can be made to substitute Portland cement in special applications like type 2. You just have to ask your supplier, your cement supplier or manufacturer with regards to its capability to resist sulfate high or moderate no? to make concrete more durable make it less permeable use the right cement to help mitigate durability issues provide adequate cover to rebars and to improve permeability of concrete keep water cement ratio low sabi, 0.4 below provide adequate curing para talaga nag hydrate na and the hydration products will uh, fill up ng mga capillary pores, no? And consider use of blended cement because it also helps the environment. So in short, good concreting practice helps build durable structures. Thank you so much. I hope you learned something and uh, I wish everyone safe. Get in touch with us to know more about how we can help you with your cement needs and durability and sustainability. Thanks, back to you, JL. Thank you, Engineer Erwin, for that insightful presentation on cement basics and types. I hope our attendees have learned something from your presentation, sir. And we will be also sending you a copy of the recording of this event through email. And just a reminder um, to key in or enter your questions in our Q&A box located on your Zoom doc. Again, for any question, you may key it in in our Q&A box located on your Zoom doc. All right, as we have finished talking about cement, we will be moving on to our next speaker who, who will be talking about aggregates. She is the current chairman of the Board of Philippine Concrete Industry Association or PCIA and former PCIA president, a technical consultant at Lafarge Wholesome Aggregates covering the areas of product development, quality management, and ISO QEHS, IMS. Presently, she is the interim vice chairman of the Bureau of Philippine Standards Technical Co Committee on Concrete, Reinforced Concrete, and Pre-Stressed Concrete, and authored several technical papers published in the Philippine Concrete Journal. It's all welcome. Ms. Dolor Dulyaga from Lafarge Wholesome Aggregates to tell us more about the impact of aggregates and the durability of concrete. I miss Dol, take it away, Paul. Thank you, JL, for that introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. I will be presenting the second half, the second part of our seminar, which is entitled Role of Aggregates in the Durability or Quality of Concrete. So here it is. The outline is this. We will be uh, tackling the components of aggregates as a review. And then the properties of concrete influenced by aggregates and the effects of aggregates properties, its property of the aggregate on the performance of concrete as to workability, strength, and durability. So here are the ingredients of concrete. What can you say about this? Please type your answer in the chat box. 
Well, we are looking at, at, at the components of concrete and we observe that aggregates, coarse and fine, occupy the biggest volume in a concrete mix. So, agreed tayo lahat chan. And here are three concrete mixes of different proportions. But all of them, so in figure three, we can see that the total aggregates content, sand and gravel or coarse and fine, is 67%. It's an air entrained concrete with high slump concrete. And in figure two, it's a non air entrained concrete, higher cement content, and lower slump. And the total aggregates content again is 69%. The other one is 67%. And in here, it's 69%. In figure one, we have here a total aggregates content of this concrete mix uh, at 81%. Now, bakit walang hangin? All concrete should have air. Bakit walang hangin ito? Why is there no air in this mix? The reason is this composition is by weight and the others are by volume. So walang weight yung hangin, di ba? Agreed. So aggregates occupy 60% to 75% of the volume of concrete mix and accounts for 70% to 85% of the weight of concrete. So being the major component, aggregates contributes important properties to both press and hardened concrete, and also greatly influences the performance of the resulting concrete structure. So yung durability ng concrete structure, kaya may influence talaga ng aggregates. Uh, next, ka, we will study the properties of concrete influenced by aggregates which are workability, strength, and durability. Uh, marami sa inyo siguro magsasabi, ah, marami pang properties. Pero when you consider everything, basta sa fresh concrete, kahit anong sabi mo, mahirap itamp, mahirap i-compact, mahirap i-finish, it all boils down to workability. Tapos mababa ang strength, uh, hindi pumasa, strength pa rin yun, di ba? when it comes to hardened concrete. And then durability is yung performance na ng concrete structure. So what is workability? Workability is the ease with which the concrete ingredients can be placed, or can be mixed, transported, placed, compacted, and finished with minimum loss of homogeneity. Hindi basta basta nagbabago ang kanyang. Next, yung itsura ng halo, hindi mabilis uh, mag matuyo or it's like uh, yung homogeneity as is siya, hindi dapat tayo magdadagdag ng tubig o hindi dapat kailangan uh, magdagdag ng tubig para lang ma-improve. Pero as is na dapat yun upon mixing at dapat hindi magkakaroon ng segregation para magiging workable yung halo. Walang segregation, wala rin bleeding. Uh, bleeding is yung tubig na lum tumataas, luma pumupunta sa ibabaw pagka pinipinis yung konkreto. So dapat yung fresh concrete ay workable para pagdating ng, ng strength uh, determination, mataas ang strength niya at durable pa siya. So we have to start with the fresh concrete. Because the workability of the conc fresh concrete affects the cost of labor of concrete structure. So makaka-, makaka affect na siya sa economy ng konkreto. Uh, hindi natin masyadong ibabanggitin yung cost ng concrete dito, pero itatakil natin slightly lang. So, mapapamahal yung labor cost mo kung hindi workable yung konkreto mo. Kasi syempre, tatagal. O magkakaroon pa ng reworks. Uulitin niya kasi pangit ang finish, di ba? Kasi workability impacts the quality of surface finish. Hindi maganda yung appearance. Tapos, the workability also affects the strength. 
So kung maraming mga butas-butas yan, mga air pockets, honeycombs, ganyan, syempre, mababa ang strength niya. Tsaka yung durability niya, yun yung tinatawag na permeability, papasok na yung tubig, hindi siya durable. Kaya sa fresh concrete pa lang, sa umpisa pa lang, dapat maayos na yung concrete. Maganda na yung kanyang itsura, maganda na yung workability niya. Para tama ang pagkaka-place, pagkaka-compact, pagkaka-finish ng konkreto. So, ano na yung mga factors affecting workability? In here, makikita natin na lima na kagad. One, two, three, four, five, six. Anim. Anim kaagad ang causes or factors na due to aggregates. So, we will not be discussing each of this, but we will be discussing the aggregates as this is the topic of discussion. So, yung workability is affected greatly, not only by cement, but also by the aggregates. Anyway, they are the two major components ng concreto. So, the second property is strength of the hardened concrete. So, yung concrete should be able to resist or sustain the applied loads. Kasi yun yung kanyang dinesign para dyan. Dapat ma-carry ma niya yung load o ma-resist niya. So the aggregate's compressive strength should be very high to attain a high strength concrete. In here, I'm saying that concrete 5,000 PSI or 35 MPa and above is highly dependent on good quality aggregates to be able to attain its target strength. Bakit 5,000 PSI? Previously, sinasabi natin 4,000 PSI lang. Above 4,000 PSI, hindi mo na maa-attain kung pangit ang quality ng aggregates mo. Kasi dati, parang yung mga cement na pinuproduce hanggang 4,000 PSI lang. So lahat ng concrete designs, 4,000 and above, uh, 4,000 and below, the strength is controlled by the cement quality. Pero ngayon kasi, may mga cement na na 5,000 na yung kanilang ano, tulad ng wholesome cement, di ba? So it's now 5,000 PSI. Sinasabi ko, more than 5,000 PSI, aggregates na ang control ng strength. You can never attain the strength of the concrete higher than 5,000 PSI kung hindi ka gagamit ng magandang quality na bato na mataas din ang strength. Tama ba ako? So the strength, when you test the compressed, uh, there are types of test to determine the strength. So nakikita nyo dito, meron din yung actual uh, impact, diba? uh, actual load test, yan yan. Pero these are the concrete, and, uh, cylind uh, concrete cylinders and beam samples. So this is a tested uh, cylinder. You will notice that the brake is at the cement paste. If you happen to see a broken cylinder, that is broken on the aggregates portion, it means the aggregates used is weak, porous, or soft, or friable. Mahina, mahina yung konkreto. Dapat yun, mas mataas ang strength ng aggregates. So dapat hindi siya na-break during testing. So the third property is the durability of the concrete structure. Ano nga ba yung pagkakaiba ng strength sa durability? So yung strength is the ability of the concrete to sustain or resist the applied loads. While the durability is the ability to resist destructive or harmful elements during its service life sa buong buhay niya. So you will see here, uh, structure, durable structures, pagkatagal-tagal na nila. Uh, in India, there's a building constructed in 1632 and it's still a tourist attraction. The White House in the U.S. was built in 1793 and St. Peter's Basilica was finished in 1626. At uh, talagang very durable pa hanggang ngayon mga structures na to. So with the use of good quality materials, the concrete structure will be able to resist 
weathering, and environmental actions or any process of determination. Pero take note na hindi lang uh, aggregates at saka cemento, diba? as Erwin has already stated, there are many factors for a durable concrete. Uh, one is the design, the others are workmanship or proper construction practices. So one property which is not supposed to be included, but I just I will just be including it anyway to show uh, the role of aggregates again to lower the cost of concrete. So in here you will see that almost 50% of the uh, total concrete cost is cement. Pinakamahal ang cement. So the key ngayon to make your concrete cost lower, maging cost efficient is to select properly yung aggregates na gagamitin mo to be able to reduce your cement. So 30 MPA is 4,350 PSI. So we now go to the effects of aggregates properties on concrete per performance as to workability, strength, and durability. Isa-isahin na natin kung ano ba yung property na nag-contribute sa workability. Ano-ano ba yung property ng aggregates na nag-contribute sa strength at saka sa durability. So we'll identify the unworkable fresh concrete as one problem. And also, we have identified the characteristics of an unworkable fresh concrete here and the causes of this unworkability. So here, for fast setting, rapid slump plots, early stiffening, we have these causes. And then for segregation, this is mainly caused by aggregates. And of course, the improper mixed proportioning and inaccurate placement compaction handling. So another characteristics of an unworkable mix is too much sand or insufficient sand in the mix. And again, these are the identified causes. Uh, too much coarse aggregates or insufficient coarse aggregates so these are the causes. And then bleeding, nagtutubig. These are the causes. We will now, in the succeeding slides, we will be selecting the causes relative to aggregates as our focus of discussion. So unworkable fresh concrete summarizes ito yung kanyang properties. And these are the common aggregates problem causing the unworkability of concrete. So the first property, the very important property of aggregates to solve unworkability is the grading or particle size distribution or SHIB analysis or mechanical analysis, whatever you call it, they are the same. So well-graded aggregates contains different sizes which are progressively sized particles to fill in the spaces between larger particles. So, ibig sabihin, yung 3 fourth mo, hindi lahat ng particles 3 fourth. Meron yan 3 eight, may 1 half, at meron pang konting buhangin. Kasi yun yung well graded. Uh, may mga customers or may mga users na pagka sinabing 3 fourth kailangan 3 fourth lahat yung bato, hindi ganun. So mayroong grading table na tinatawag, mag-refer tayo sa ASTM para dun sa specs na sinusunod or sa DPW sa blue book nandun din kung ano yung mga grading. So hindi ibig sabihin iisa lang ang size. So kung ganoon ang aggregates mo, well graded siya, marireduce yung void in between aggregates. Mapiprevent din your segregation kasi tama yung balance niya. So there will be no bleeding kasi uh, na-reduce na yung voids. Wala na masyado. At just magiging homogeneous din yung mix mo. So there should be fine aggregates content sufficient also 
for your composite aggregates content in the mix. And to select your sand, your the finest modulus should be less than three because or three and below because greater than three usually leads to bleeding and segregation. Shadow ng harsh yung halumo. Ibig sabihin kasi ng greater than three magas lang. So to meet specified grading or particle size distribution, we need to blend different sizes of aggregates kasi yung iba hindi commercially available yung blended na. So we have to blend. At ano yung basis natin? Nandun sa ESTM C33 grading table, makikita natin doon kung ano yung specs ng blended aggregates for a particular concrete mix. So in this uh, slide, makikita natin uh, a grading chart of a well-graded aggregates report. So the dotted lines on the top is the uh, upper limit and the lower is the lower limit. When you graph your results of sheaves analysis, sheave analysis, because during sheaving you have the sizes of sheaves, diba? Uh, sunod -sunod yan. And then ito yung result mo percent passing. Kung ipaplat mo yan, the result your grading curve should be within the grading envelope. Ibig sabihin pasado yan. So this is an example of the Lapard's full seam aggregates grading chart. Uh, perfect, diba? Sa lahat ng planta. Well, eh, anyway, Kung yung curve mo is on the upper or upper than this uh, dotted line, nandito siya sa taas, ibig sabihin, very coarse yung aggregates mo. Kung yun namang points mo ay nandito sa baba, ay, balik na tayo, excuse me. Kung nandito sa taas, napaka, napaka pino. Kasi mas pino ka kaysa doon sa upper limit. Kung nandito naman sa baba, ibig sabihin, magaspang. So, in your laboratory, nakaredy na dapat tong graph na to. Kada pagkatapos nyo ng testing, kiin nyo lang kaagad, kikita nyo na kaagad. Kung bagsak pasado kasi lumabas. Ay, magaspang. Ay, mapino. Hindi mo na kailangan pag-isipan kung mapino ba o magaspang. Kasi, pagka tumaas na siya dito, papino na. Pagka mag bumaba dito, magaspang na. So, there are, these are examples of uh, unworkable concrete. This mix with segregation, and this is for air pockets. So aside from grading and particle size distribution, another desirable property of concrete is particle shape. Uh, another property of aggregates, excuse me, aggregate should be angular and cubical. Because angular and cubical aggregates exhibit best interlock strength and durability during consolidation, compaction, or load application. So pag gumamit ka ng flat, flaky, elongated aggregates, mahirap i-compact, nababasag pa. Kunyari flat, nababasag during mixing and compaction. At magkakaroon na excessive bleeding due to high percentage of voids kasi nga walang best interlock between the particles. So... Magkakaroon ka pa ng uh, excessive fines kasi nadurog, nadurog. Well, pagka flat and flaky yung aggregates mo, madudurog during compaction. So here is an example of uh, angular and cubical aggregates. Take note, matas ang strength niya pagka ganito ang particle shape. So, another uh, desirable aggregate property to produce a workable press concrete is yung specific gravity and absorption. Usually, specific gravity pag mababa, mahina. Mahina yung bato, ibig sabihin. At pangit din ang performance niya sa konkreto. Yung absorption, dapat mababa lang. Kasi kung mataas, ibig sabihin, highly porous yung aggregates. So, kung highly porous yung aggregates mo, uh, we are speaking here of workability. Yung tubig, mapupunta, i-absorb ng porous aggregates yung tubig. So, magkakaroon ka ng early stiffening ng 
press concrete, magkakaroon ng slump loss, rapid slump loss, kasi kinuha lahat ng highly porous ag aggregates, yung mixing water mo. So, hindi na magiging workable yon. So, the higher the absorption, the weaker the material, kasi ngayon, konkreto, ayaw nyo yung tubig, di ba? So, kailang dumami na yung uh, tubig, kailangan mo na yung cement. Hindi na, hindi na economical yung mix mo kasi to attain your sp specified strength, kailangan magdadagdag ka na ng semento. Pero how about if your your concrete is 5,000 PSI and higher? So, hindi na makakayanan ng semento lang, di ba? So, you have to choose your aggregates properly with low absorptive capacity. Another property of aggregates that should be considered for a workable concrete is the toughness and durability. So, dapat matibay din siya. How can you, how can you produce a good workable concrete kung mahina yung bato mo? So, pag-consolidate pa lang, nadudurog na. Diba? Hindi siya durable. So, katulad din ng porous materials or flat and elongated particles, yung, yung magkakaroon ka ng excessive fines, magkakaroon ng segregation kasi nasira na yung mix design mo pag mahina yung konkretong ginamit mo. Pag mahina yung, yung asphalt ay aggregates na ginamit mo. Excuse me. So, ganun yung mangyayari. Matibay din dapat yung iyong bato. At para makita yan, we have to, your aggregate should pass the Los Angeles abrasion test. Ang um, specs niya makikita pa rin siya sa ESTN and sa mga DPWH books. So another property of concrete is the strength. Problem is the low compressive strength or low flexural strength or low tensile strength. So, we have identified some causes here. And these are the contributions of aggregates on low strength concrete or due to the, these aggregates problem. And to mitigate these problems, low concrete strength problems, again, the desirable Property should be the grading or particle size distribution or chip analysis or mechanical analysis. The aggregate should be well graded. So, i-reduce niya yung voids content at mag-result siya ng higher strength concrete. Reduced voids content results to higher strength concrete. So, excessive fine aggregates, so because uh, it's not well graded, that's why excessive fine aggregates will result to more surface areas to be covered by cement, therefore low strength. Uh, unless you add more cement. Uh, here is, uh, what do you call this? Figure on single size, poorly graded and well graded aggregates. Representation. And these are the voids for single size aggregates. Poorly graded. Why poorly graded? Because uh, the aggregates is big and then sand immediately. While well graded, there are progressively sized aggregates. So what are these square ones? These are the amount of cement paste needed for this type of aggregates skeletons. Composite aggregate skeleton. So you, so you will see this is more economical. And which one exhibits higher strength? Of course, this one. Sa itsura pa lang, di ba? Mas matibay na talaga. And the next property that we will solve is the poor bond between, the next problem is the poor bond between aggregates and cement paste. So the aggregate should be clean or free from any harmful substances because the clay coatings, coatings present in the aggregates result to poor bond between aggregates and cement paste. 
So, magiging low yung strength mo kasi nagkakahiwalay sila. May, may segregation. The organic impurities also affect hydration of cement. So, either magre-result ito sa low strength or low strength gain kasi maapektuhan niya yung cement hydration. So, we have to select aggregates that are clean. And one way of cleaning the aggregates is the implant washing to remove the impu impurities and contaminants. So this is the reason why some manufacturers prefer clean aggregates kasi mas makakatipid sila. Kasi kung madumi, mababa, mababa strength, dadamihan mo yung simento. Hindi siya economical. Mababa pa ang strength niya. Uh, later, mapag-uusapan din natin na yung clay coatings will also contribute to durability problems. So, another uh, aggregate property that may solve the poor bond between aggregates and cement paste is the surface texture. The surface texture should be rough, magaspang. So, pag ang surface texture ng aggregates is magaspang, there is excellent bond between the aggregates and cement paste, which results to higher strength and durability. Manufacturers cross the, the aggregates to produce rough surface texture in others. So, this kitang kita. Rough surface textured aggregates contribute to high strength durability of concrete. So let's uh, discuss more about the aggregate surface texture because some of you will say that the aggregate surface texture will contribute to difficulty in mixing and placement. True. So it requires higher pace demand to be, make it more workable but there is increased band strength. And in hardened properties, however, it has high, higher compressive strength. So in smooth textured aggregates, mas madali siyang i-place. Kasi nga, ano eh, parang madulas na siya eh, di ba? Pero yung lower ang compressive strength niya sa hardened properties. So you have to choose between strength ba or workability, di ba? Siyempre, strength na yun. Kasi kung uh, unworkable, kaya mo namang i-place, di ba? Hindi naman ganun kahirap. Or kung baga, there is a minimal lang yung difference talaga. So, as most surface can improve workability, yet a rougher surface generates a stronger bond between paste and the aggregates, creating a higher strength concrete. Rough surface textured particles increase, take note, ito ang importante dito, increase the compressive strength of concrete up to 20 to 30 percent as compared to uncrossed natural grabbers from river beds. So this is the contribution of rough surface textured aggregates to the strength of concrete, which is 20 to 30 percent above those attained by the natural aggregates or so textured aggregates. So another problem is the use of poor or weak aggregates. This also causes low concrete strength. And so we need to use angular and cubical aggregates because this leads also to higher strength. As discussed earlier, So there will be lower strength because of the, of the breakage of poorly shaped aggregates during application of compressive load. Kaya mas mahina ang kanyang strength. Para sa agri uh, earlier, we discussed angular and cubical. So in here, we said the particle shape should be cubical. And then we have to discuss the particle shape again. 
because the particle shape contributes to a less workable concrete. However, however, higher compressive and flexural strengths will be the result. So this, uh, the, this is the cubicle. I'm talking about the rough surface texture. So we have discussed this earlier. This one's the particle, partic particle angularity. So the pressed concrete increased band strength, but require higher pace demand to make it more workable. But the strength is higher as compared to rounded particles. So another uh, property is the structural strength. As I was saying earlier, there is no way that you can produce high strength concrete if your aggregates are weak or they, they don't have structural strength. So in addition to abrasion resistance, the structural integrity of aggregates is also evaluated by and confined compressive strength of the aggregates itself. This is done as required by European standard, but ASTM requires, the American Society for Testing and Materials requires only the abrasion resistance to evaluate the toughness or structural strength of aggregates. So added information, the inherent compressive strength of basalt rock is 23,000 PSI to 29,000 PSI. Another property is specific gravity and absorption. So low absorption equates to higher strength concrete, low absorption of aggregates, and then high absorption, more water and lower concrete strength and more cement needed to meet specs. So this is again for the strength. Earlier, uh, this discussion was focused on the workability of concrete. So a table here is presented showing that basalt rock is the most durable or strong or more resistant. Abrasion loss is very low. So the, lo the lower the abrasion loss, the tougher the material. So you see the absorption is only 0.5. Uh, there are aggregates also for rocks which exhibit high specific gravity, but then they may be very brittle. So their abrasion loss is too high. So that's the problem with too high specific gravity. The tendency, the aggregates is to become brittle, but for basalt, it's not. So we will now go to the concrete durability problems. We have also identified here the possible causes. And then the use of poor quality aggregates again will be our focus. And these are the durability problems that may occur with the use of poor quality aggregates. So many of you may be familiar of these problems already. So again, grading for durability problems, grading of aggregates is very important because aside from reduced voids, which prevents bleeding and improves workability and contributes to high strength, Poorly graded aggregates are highly susceptible to shrinkage or deterioration. So this is their contribution to the durability. In this durable, in this well graded, magkakaroon ng volume changes, which leads to cracking. So dun sa yung cleanliness naman for durability. Yung clay-like materials also causes shrinkage and swelling. Kasi yung clay ay may expansive property. When it absorbs moisture, nagsuswell siya. So magkakaroon ng cracking din yung konkreto. 
pag yung iyong bato ay hindi malinis at may mga clay. So again, the structural strength, the aggregate should be, uh, should have high strength to make a durable concrete. The particle shape should be uh, angular and cubical. The surface texture should be rough and uh, specific gravity and absorption should be low. Not too low for specific gravity, but for absorption, it's okay. And then toughness and durability. So the aggregates for durable concrete must be able to resist any process of deterioration during manufacture or during the service life of the concrete structure. So take note that your durability, ipinag-uusapan natin dito yung service life niya. It should be long-lasting kasing tagal nung mga nakita nating pictures kanina para maging durable, di ba? The strength is lakas and durability is tibay, right? So the aggregates should meet specifications on the following tests. So may mga specs ito, like Los Angeles abrasion test, May mga specs dyan sa ESTM, sa ating blue book, and then yung soundness, which measures the resistance to weathering or environmental actions during its service life. And then the potential alkali reactivity test. Ito din yung determine yung reaction between alkalis from cement and from the environment with the reactive silica or carbonate in the aggregates. So for abrasion, low abrasion loss and low soundness loss, kasi yun yung result na makukuha mo when you test it. Percent abrasion loss, percent soundness loss. So the lower it is, the more structurally sound, tough, and durable is your aggregates and eventually your structure. For alkali reactivity, the aggregate should be non-reactive or inocuous to contribute to a tough stable and durable concrete. Alkali silica reaction. There are two types of alkali aggregates reaction. They are the ASR and the ACR. ASR is the alkali silica reaction and ACR is the alkali carbonate reaction. Alkali silica reaction is for silica Silicious aggregates as, as basalt, gabbro, andesite, granite. For the ACR, alkali carbonate reaction, it's for carbonate rocks, carbonate aggregates as, as limestone and dolomite. So we'll focus on ASR because it's the common problem. We, uh, limestone and dolomite are not yet uh, so much in use in the Philippines. So alkali silica reaction occurs when reactive silica in the aggregates, reactive silica in the aggregates react with the alkalis present in the cement, in the cement or from any other sources. Because silica is not only present in the cement, some come from the admixtures, the mineral or liquid admixtures. Some come from the water and some come from the aggregates itself. So when the alkali from these sources reacts with silica or combines with silica from the aggregates, they form reaction product called alkali silicate gel. This alkali silicate gel <coughs> When it absorbs moisture, it will expand. And this will cause cracking of concrete. So ito yan, nag-crack sila. So the permeability is now impaired. Here comes the sulfate attack that is still oxidation and rusting that Erwin has uh, discussed. So the ASR gives way. Ino-open niya yan para makapag-attack na yung mga uh, kaaway ng uh, 
reinforcing steel bars. So, kakalawangin na yan, masisira na. Magkakaroon na ng deterioration yung konkreto. For highly reactive aggregates, uh, makikita na kaagad ang effect niyan within one year. Pero kung hindi masyadong reactive yung aggregates or hindi masyadong mataas yung alkali content ng konkreto, matagal. There are some, it takes 20 years bago makita yung alkali silicate reaction defect. So what should we do? We should limit the alkali content of concrete through proper selection of raw materials such as cement, aggregates, liquid and mineral admixtures, and water. In summary, for a workable freeze concrete, a strong hardened concrete and durable concrete structure and cost-efficient concrete mix, we need to use well-graded aggregates. Among other factors, uh, may I add? And we should also use clean aggregates free from any harmful ingredients. Our workability, it's not so significant, but in strength, durability, and cost efficiency. This is why cost efficiency, because you need more cement to attain your strength. And then the particle shape should be cubical and angular. And this affects the workability, strength, and durability, and cost efficiency on a very significant level. The surface texture should be rough. It affects the workability on a negative level, but on these three, it already offsets the gain you, you get from using the rough surface textured aggregates. And then the structural strength should be high. Remember, basalt has a 23,000 to 29,000 PSI inherent strength. So you'll be able to attain a high, high strength concrete, high performance concrete. The aggregates should be sound and durable. The specific gravity should be average and the density is low or, or the absorption is low, low porosity. And that's it. You now have a very durable concrete. That ends my presentation. Thank you very much everyone for participating in this session. Uh, back to you now, to our host, JL. Thank you, Ms. Dolor, for a great and informative presentation. Salamat again, ma'am. Again, we will be sending you a copy of the recording of these presentations through email. And now we move to the next part of our session, which is the question and answer. May we call back our speakers, Engineer Erwin Mendoza and Ms. Dolor. Um, also helping us to moderate the Q&A is Engineer Grace Sofana, Technical Services Officer of Holcim. Engineer Grace is a licensed civil engineer and accredited material engineer. Grace? I think you're on mute, Grace. Thanks, right. JM. Sure. And, and so it's time now for our Q&A. So, uh, okay, we have some questions here that our speakers can answer live. So for our first question, uh, this is for Engineer Irwin. Sir, regarding the bleeding and void, is blended cement compatible in all types of ASTM C494 or the or ASTM for the admix? Yeah, so thank you for the question. Uh, that's a good question, by the way. Yeah, in terms of compatibility naman, yeah, we tested several admixtures naman, and in our experience with ours, for example, Solido, which is the one that we also push for ready mix plants who uses admixtures, no? Um, we experienced no problem. So as expected, but this is just, an advice for everyone who's using admixtures that for any new cement that you're going to use, it's really advisable to undergo trial mixes para ma malaman natin. But if it's not compatible, just don't focus directly on cement. I mean, 
uh, if you've uh, seen the diagram I've shown a while ago with regards to properties of concrete, cement is just one portion of it. There's a lot of other uh, factors that can go, that can um, affect the compatibility. For example, sinabi ni Ms. Dolor kanina, the clay in your sand or the clay in your aggregates, for example. Uh, matinding kalaban ng, aggregate, ng admixture ang clay. So, so that's one thing also you have to look into before concluding that it's cement causing the the incompatibility. Bottom line, you have to test and you have to investigate. Thank you. Okay. So another question for Sir Irwin. Hmm. Sir, which cement is uh, lower in CO2, carbon dioxide, and not hazardous to the environment? Is it the slug cement or the blended cement? Okay, thank you. Uh, let me correct that first. No, uh, Slug cement is a kind of blended cement. So, kasama siya. So, there's another uh, pozzolan cement, for example. There's another blended cement. Slug cement is one blended cement. So, in terms of carbon dioxide emissions, sino ba yung mas, mas uh, favorable sa kanya in terms of environmental protection? So, fly ash would be better than slag because may tinatawag tayong embedded carbon dioxide. No? For example, ang clinker is merong mga 800 uh, kilogram of carbon dioxide per ton. 800. I-compare mo yan, ngayon yan sa fly ash which is only 4 kilogram carbon dioxide per ton. Yan yung embedded. No? Habang ginagawa mo itong produkto na to, ano yung corresponding emission ng carbon dioxide. So 4 lang yung sa fly ash. Slag probably around 50. If I'm not mistaken, around 50 siya. Medyo mataas yung, yung carbon dioxide embedded niya. No? So it would be fly ash in terms of more carbon dioxide emission, uh, a lesser carbon dioxide emission, and hence more environmentally friendly. Okay, Thanks. thank you, Irwin. So for um, Ms. Dolor, Mom, mm -hmm. what happens if the grading of the aggregates and find are outside the lower margin. If the grading is outside the lower margin, so yes. it's very. Ibig sabihin on it's very coarse. Your aggregate is very coarse. There will be bleeding segregation in your concrete, your fresh concrete. So, di ba? If your fresh concrete is unworkable. Natin, it may lead to durability problems, strength problems. Kasi hindi ma place ng maayos, di ba? Merong mga uh, rock packets, yung mga honeycomb, ganon. Kasi nagkaroon ng segregation, lahat ng yung malalaki na punta dito, yung malilit na punta doon. Hindi, hindi na-peel up lahat ng voids so, kailangan mo maraming semento pati para maging workable at mataas ang strength mo. Hindi siya maganda. Hindi maganda ang halo. Mababa ang strength. Hindi workable yung mix. At hindi rin durable, ibig sabihin. Kailangan pasado sa grading. So, next question. Okay, ma. For the next question, what are the example of aggregates that are potential in ASR? And there's a follow-up question po. Uh, if, uh, how are you going to address if, uh, if your only source of aggregate is positive in ASR? Uh, ako sasagot. If there is no available source na hindi reactive, kunyari, nasa isang lugar ka na po, available source is Reactive siya. There are many ways to do. You have to use low alkali cement. Uh, reduce the cement content by using mineral admixtures like fly ash. Because pag ni-reduce mo yung cement, syempre bababa rin yung alkali content. So gagamit ka ng fly ash. May mga other uh, Ingredients pa pero yun yung pinaka-common kasi malayo ka eh, di ba? Wala kang makuha ang iba. So yun yung pinaka-maganda. Ililimit mo, may specs yan kung gano'ng karami yung, yung alkali content mo sa konkreto. 
Yep. So, if yeah. I may add, you can also use blended cement because alkali comes from clinker. No? And for blended mm -hmm. cement, you reduce the clinker, you replace it with something else like fly ash. Mm -hmm. So in a way, you're also reducing the alkaline or the alkali content of, of the blended cement. But again, you have to test. No? Mm -hmm. You have to test all your materials kasi yung ibang pinanggagalingan ng reaction or alkalinity nanggagaling din sa mga admixture, sa tubig. Ganun. So proper selection talaga ng raw materials. Next question. <laughs> for the next question po, this is for Sir Irwin. Uh, okay. Uh, what type of uh, water matters in the durability of concrete? What type of ah, so kung anong what type of water na pwedeng gamitin? Ah, that can affect durability. Yes. I mean sir. mixing water, no? Yeah. So as a general rule, not necessarily on durability but in good concreting practice, no. We have a general rule na if you can drink it, then you can use it. That's the general rule on what type of water you can use. But there, of course, hindi naman lahat mainom natin yung tubig na nandoon sa site, no. So there are sa sapa, sa balon or yep. Yeah, yeah, past pH and TDS of water. I was about to say that. So, merong mga sources ng tubig na nandun sa site na yun yung readily accessible for us. But, tama si sir dito sa chat, you have to test it. Yun yung ideal talaga na gagawin. You have to test the water if it can be suitable for your for your concrete. No? But, ang no-no talaga na tubig na hindi natin pwedeng gamitin sa concreting is sewage water. Because you never know kung anong nandun sa sewage water na yun, di ba? <laughs> right. So, uh, yung sa balon, balon, okay yun. But we don't know ano din nandun. But we can test it and we can determine. No? Baka may sulfates doon kasi malapit sa fertilizer area or sa sakahan area, for example. Lang. Better to test it. Thank you. Um, and there's a follow-up question, sir. What is the <laughs> most recommended type of... um? of cement on structures to be erected on salty water. Yeah, salty water. So again, depending on the structure, if you have rebars, assuming na may rebars, no? so you have to protect it from chloride. Asin, yung nasa dagat, that's calcium chloride. No? Ah, sorry, sodium chloride. So, papasok yun, magkakaroon ng chloride attack. So you have to protect your concrete. The best is, yun, type 5, depending sa level ng, baka may sulfates din dun sa sa dagat no normally kasama yan kapag dagat sulfates and chloride so you have to protect both so you use uh, type 5 cement for kung very severe yung presence ng sulfate ions or you can use moderate sulfate resistant cement uh, type 2 for moderate sulfate uh, presence ng sulfate ions but you can use blended cement as i've said a while ago as a substitute to this uh, type of opc this portland cement uh, cements and because you have chloride, it's chloride is not attacking your cement or your concrete, but it's attacking your rebars. So provide good cover. Yung sinasabi natin kanina. Follow the design on good coverage. No? Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Sir Irwin. And um, to all our participants, due to our limited time, we cannot answer all your questions. So once again, thank you, Sir Irwin and Mom Dolor. And to all the participants, thank you for all your questions. If you were not able to answer your queries, rest assured that we will send the answers to your questions later on via mail. And if you have inquiries re related to price or technical product assistance, you may fill up the link to our contact form, which is located in the chat box. So once again, thank you, Sir Irwin and Ma'am Dolor. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to PinoyBuilders.ph to get the latest innovation on everything about construction.